Today we'll use an Easter bag for this sign. Keep watching. Okay, so we're going to start off with these supplies. And I have a variety of ribbon. This one came from the Dollar Tree from the Easter section, and it is a wire ribbon. This is thrifted ribbon and it has no wire in it. And then this ribbon came from also the Dollar Tree and it just came over in the garden section. Little polka dots. This pick came from Dollar Tree. And then this one and the other floral one came from Goodwill. If you recognize that sign, you can let me know that tag. I'm not sure where that comes from. I'm going to use a sign that came from, I believe, Dollar Tree, but it's very old. And then this bag from Walmart that I got on clearance last year. You use any bag that you want. Dollar Tree has a lot of nice ones. And you can also get them at Walmart for fairly inexpensive. So I'm just going to cut off that hanger. And decide which side of the bag I want. One side has white writing and the other side has silver. For my style and taste, I'm going to use the white. Just want to cut this out. Use whatever type of tool you want. Um, like one of those scrapbook cutters would probably be pretty easy and quick to use for this too. But I cannot find mine. I do not know what I did with it. So then I want to decide where I want this to be centered on that board. What part of this graphic from the bag do I want to be on my sign. So I'm just kind of moving it around the board to see about where I would need to put it. And once I get it there, I'm going to crease that paper so I'll know where to put it. I'm making sure it's even so I don't have any crooked areas and then I'm just going to cut it out. Do the same thing on both ends. that is what it's going to look like. So I'm just going to generously apply my glue stick here all over. I love the purple vanishing stick. You can really see where you lay that down and I like that. So I'm going to place it where I want it and there is a little bit of room up there on the top because I cut it a bit shorter than I anticipated. Y'all excuse the um, it being out of focus, I'm going to correct that in just a minute. I didn't realize it at the time. I wear glasses and I don't use them like I should. So, yeah, looking through that tiny viewfinder, sometimes I, I don't see things the way I think everybody else sees them. So then I'm going to take this sanding block and go ahead and finish off the two sides. Makes a nice little finished edge. Okay, so this is what it looks like without any type of border. This is some thrifted, I don't know if that's like a rope type trim, but that's what it looks like to me. And I think it's gonna look really good with the white truck and the white print on here. So I'm gonna protect my fingers and get my glue gun and just start laying down a line a little bit at a time. Glue dries pretty quickly, so I'm making a border up there, and you can see where I have that empty space that there's no um, bag piece on, and that's where I'm putting that little piece of rope. This is just going to trim it out nicely. You don't have to do this. Um, it's just an option to give it some dimension. When you make the corners, when you use rope-like trims, it's always kind of helpful if you have a clip or something that you can hold it in place, unless you want to hold it for a minute. Um, I, I try to work quickly because I never know when I'm going to be interrupted when the kids are home. So yeah, time saver. And I'm just going to do this all the way around until I get back to that corner. So that's me out of, see the little pink clip? Those come from the Crafters Square in Dollar Tree. I love those little clips and they have little silicone ends so they don't stick to the glue. I 
how's weather where you live? Are you getting some sunshiny days? Is a lot of rain? I know some people still get uh, snow right now, but we are not. We are having nice days and the highs are in the, the 70s and there's lots of sunshine and we are really loving it. My family, my dog, everybody just seems like the mood is a little bit lighter. Okay, so I'm just gonna try to cut that and add a little glue on the end so that I can get that little fuzzy corner smoothed down. That gives it a more finished look. Can't see where it starts and ends. I'm gonna remove those clamps after I've given them some time to set up. And I'm gonna start working on an embellishment for this sign. You can leave yours simple if you don't wanna put, you know, bows or anything additional on yours. You certainly don't have to. So I'm starting off with this ribbon from Dollar Tree and I'm making about a five inch loop with about a five or six inch loop tail. Since it's printed on one side, I'm gonna pinch it in the middle and then twist it so that I place the printed part up on the top. I'm gonna cut that section off. You can use a clamp to hold it in place or you can hold it in your hand while you begin to layer it. So I did the same thing with this ribbon. And you can add it to your stack or I don't know what I was thinking right there. And then we're going to go for the third layer of our bow and it's going to be exactly the same. The paint is thicker on one side, even though you can see it through the burlap. The paint is thicker on one side and that's the side I want to show. So twisting that in the middle is going to give me the pretty side up for my bow. So now I just need to decide which way I want to layer this, what bow I want to go on top and on what I want to go on the bottom. Now since this top bow does not have the structure from wire, I decided to put it on top. And I'll show you how I make it look a little less floppy here in a minute. I'm going to use a zip tie. You can get a big bag of these anywhere. And they're very convenient to have around the house for other projects as well, not just for crafting. And then, of course, you want to fluff that bow out, get an idea of how it looks, where you want all of your little um, loops and tails to be, and then trim off your excess. Of course, you could use floor wire or pipe cleaner if that's what you have available. I don't edit out all of the bow fluffing and prettiness because I feel like it's helpful to see because sometimes when you make a bow, it doesn't immediately look good. You know, it takes a little bit of fluffing. It takes a little bit of attention and time to get it looking like the end result that you want. So I want to show you how my bows start so you can see how they look in the end and that you shouldn't give up and just throw it away and toss it out and start all over again because they, you can definitely make something better of it. You can move these, these pieces all around. See there, that's much better. Then I wanted to put it in the corner, but putting it in the corner was gonna overlap my truck and I did not want to obscure my little Easter truck. So I decided, okay, well, I can raise it up a little bit if I use a popsicle stick and just attach it there. And so now you can see more of my sign, but I still have my embellishment on the top. So of course, we're gonna be using hot glue for that. And then a little piece of this ribbon to go over the top. That's just gonna give it a little extra support. Bow doesn't weigh very much, so I don't need a whole lot of reinforcement or a super ton of glue over there. Just a little bit will work. All right, so when you have the tails, make sure they're all facing up, that the pretty side is up, and make a little spot for the bow to attach to the popsicle stick. You can do this with any sign or you can do this with a wreath as well. You can put a popsicle stick in there to move your bow to the outside or the inside. Whatever makes it easier. It gives you a little more space so that the main attention can be on the sign. 
can use a clamp there like I'm going to. And this is, I think these came from the laundry section in Dollar Tree, if I'm remembering correctly. And they make really good clamps for things that are a little bit thicker. So now I'm gonna put a little bit of floral in there. And I'm choosing what pieces from these picks that I think would look the best. These picks are gorgeous. And there's several different kind that are similar to this at Dollar Tree. And they have several different little pieces. They're really pretty. Gives you a lot of variety. So I had to decide, did I want to use yellow, white, green, or peach for this project? And I think that the, pre the peach is um, going to be the winner here. There is a peach, a peach and rosy colored rose in the back of that truck or a flower. And I think that that one's going to be the one. So instead of curling my tail straight under, I kind of bowed them in the middle and curl the ends out like a wave. That's how I want those to be. And I'm trying to get the bow exactly how I want it so I can put the flower down. You can put some uh, curve in these ribbons just like that. You just use a metal piece or the edge of your scissors carefully and just pull down while holding that ribbon and it'll put a curl. It has to be a stiff ribbon. This is not going to work like on a satin. Um, this is like a polyester type ribbon. So it has some stiffness in it already and that's what you'll need to do for that. But it works and there's no wire in it. So I'm just showing you there how it coordinates. That flower matches um, a square in the ribbon and it matches some of the flowers in the back of the truck. And I'm just going to plop it down right in the center of the polka dot bow. And I think that is precious, just like it is. There I go again, arranging that bow. Okay, so I've taken the little yellow pieces and I'm going to add those. I'm just going right across from each other. Give it a little balance that way. And then there are some fern pieces here. Sorry, I'm out of uh, the camera angle here. There we go, that's a little bit better. Just gonna tuck those in between the, the bow and the flower. And then same thing, I'm gonna go across from it and add it here. And then to put a little extra something on the other side because I don't want just all the weight to be in that top corner. I'm gonna add a tiny little bit of greenery and a little surprise down here in the corner. Because these eggs won't lay flat, they are foam and they can be cut. So I just took my scissors and I am cutting off like a third of that egg. I'm going to pick a little bit of that foam out of there and reshape it. And that way, once I get my, see there, uh huh, the Easter Bunny dropped us the egg off early. I'm going to add that there. And then the yellow piece, this is the same greenery that we have in the top under the bow. And I'm going to add some blue here and put it down right on top of that. Now, after Easter is over, you could always take the egg off or you could leave the egg on and just use it again next year. Because the bag does say Easter, so you might not want to leave it up all spring. Now we need a hanger for this. So I'm just using a scrap piece of pipe cleaner that I had. And I'm going to have a long straight piece. This way you can slide it back on, back and forth on your command hook or your nail in order that it will stay balanced. Because if you put it right in the middle as a single little piece, then it may pull to one side. And you don't want that. So this way you can move it up and down until you get it balanced exactly where you want it on your wall. And there you have it. Here's our finished result. A gorgeous little Easter greeting sign from Dollar Tree, the thrift store, and Walmart clearance. What do you think about it? Have you tried projects with a bag yet? These are really simple and high-end looking pieces that are so easy to make. And of course inexpensive, and you know I'm all about that. Thank you so very much for watching, and I hope to see you again soon. Bye.